and so he uh, uh, and then uh, one day a, po a Polish police officer came in looking for my father. My father had still been in the bakery, and so uh, he uh, questioned my mother. And my mother became very nervous, and my mother told him that she doesn't know where he is. She had, she started telling a lie that he deserted us, and so but he wouldn't leave and but he kept on my father was one of these people he was like a pipe piper he uh, every little animal every stray followed him and uh, he was followed home <coughs> uh, with uh, he was also very good with plants so we had still left over a uh, ficus tree a ficus plant in our house which to the ficus plant served many purposes. It was a big, heavy plant, and uh, we didn't have an iron, so uh, I would have a little white collar for school, and I would roll up that white collar and put it under the tree so that it would be pressed. And also I had uh, navy blue ribbons for my pigtails, and I did the same thing every night, put it under the tree, so in the morning the ribbons were pressed and so was the little collar, or the school collar. And uh, so, uh, about this policeman kept on looking at the ficus tree and my mother was getting more nervous and she said to him, do you want this? So he said yes, so she says take it. So when he picked it up, it was so heavy he had to leave the house and he left the house. And then five minutes later, my father came home. And then uh, the ghetto formed. And when the ghetto, after the ghetto formed, the, uh, the Germans made a uh, uh, police station. My school was called Maria Knopnitska, which was, uh, I could hear the, the school bell uh, ring. And but after the, uh, the ghetto was formed, all the Polish people, because in, in Poland it was Jews and Polish. You could be born in Poland, your parents and grandparents and great-grandparents could be born in Poland, but you were still a Jew. You were not considered Polish, so you were Polish and there were Jews. The Catholics were the Polish and the Jews were the Jews. And so uh, after, uh, after they, they, the school liquidated, they made a police station out of that school with uh, Polish, not Polish, but the Germans picked out some young Jewish <coughs> men and put a cap on their heads and they said, you'll be a policeman. So they were training, they were, as, as all through our concentration camp, they were training our own people. They were training uh, in, in the camps, they were training, there were not only Jews in the camps, there were other uh, religions also in the camps. And they were training them to be uh, vicious, truly vicious. Uh, they were, uh, uh, some of them were as bad as, uh, as the Germans themselves. So, uh, then the, by after that, after the, the ghetto formed, the police, the Jewish police started coming looking for my father. And my mother, my, by that time, my father was already in hiding. And my mother had the same slogan that my father deserted us, we haven't seen him. So uh, they were more lenient and they left. And then, um, it, it was getting really uh, miserable because my father was in hiding and he couldn't uh, he couldn't go to the bakery and the hunger was just unbearable. Our rations that were given was not enough to feed a child. And so uh, my mother would uh, uh, go to one of the bakeries and she would sell her wedding band and uh, to the uh, little stores, the little black market stores and she would buy uh, ingredients to bake cookies. And she took me with her to uh, sell those cookies. How much time do I have about? 
Okay. When is? We have another hour and a half. Okay. All right. So, uh, because if I go into a little more detail, then I would. Uh, well, I don't want to run all the time. Uh, okay. And uh, so she took me with her to help her with the cookies and we stopped at the store and it was the, um, the little storekeeper would, uh, she would order a slice of bread for each of us and, and with honey. And that was my treat for the whole day. And then after she picked up the ingredients, we would go kind of, we would, we didn't want to get caught in the street because you get caught in the street you are being sent on a truck and uh, to some kind of work and being beaten up. So we, we knew already not to be too visible. And we went to one of the bakeries and we uh, started uh, making cookies. My mother was very good at doing that. After the cookies were baked, she gave me a big um, um, baking sheet that was I think it was bigger than this waist, and you could picture me, I mean, without my shoes, I'm, I haven't grown anything since, since I finished school, so this is me. <laughs> so um, she gave me this big sheet loaded with cookies and asked me to uh, go on the black market. There was a black market street, there was a, a, an old Jewish street where everybody that had something to sell in order to survive, there was even one woman screaming, suffering, that she had the best suffering. And, uh, and I didn't know, when I first started, I didn't know how to sell my cookies. And then I, I listened, I really listened, I was a good listener, and I really listened to other people's slogans. So I developed my own slogan and I started shouting, that my cookies are made with butter and sugar and they are the best cookies anybody and I started selling. Before that, I, nobody would look at me, nobody wanted to buy my cookies. And I was selling the cookies, but then one day, uh, usually somebody was always on the lookout, you know, our eyes were always there, but this time there was no, uh, apparently somebody wasn't looking out and the two assess uh, stormed in to that area and started chasing everybody and everybody was running to different uh, holes wherever to hide into the buildings and, and they were hiding and as they were running it, I was being pushed because I was, it was clumsy for me to carry that, that uh, cookie sheet with, full of cookies and they knocked me down and I was uh, knocked up. <clears throat> and I was uh, knocked down uh, into it. it was raining the night before and I was laying face down in the mud and, but I wouldn't let go of the cookie sheet. I was still holding on to the cookie sheet next to me. Uh, still I wasn't sure if I was conscious or not. And then uh, it was quiet. I remember it was being very quiet. And then the two assessments, I heard the boots, you could always tell by the boots, uh, were coming out and then they stood in front of me and I could hear a rifle being cut. And uh, so, uh, <clears throat> uh, the, um, so the other assessment said to, they, were, they were kicking me with the rifle, with their boots, to see if I'm moving, and I wasn't moving. And uh, since I wasn't moving, the other uh, assessment was saying to him, oh, she's dead, don't waste your bullet. And then they walked away laughing, one Jew less 